In this tutorial, we're going to look at how we can use fonts to better style our page and add a bit more visual richness to the experience. Uh, for that, we're going to be using uh, Google Web Fonts, which allow us to assign fonts that are not regularly part of the HTML or CSS standard. Uh, one of the problems with fonts is that if they're not installed on the end user's computer, then they probably won't display if you specify them on the web page. To get around that, um, there are a few options for, for getting fonts on there. Uh, we'll be using Google Fonts. It's fairly simple, and they have a nice selection of fonts uh, to assign to your page. Uh, we're starting off here with this uh, existing layout. Uh, as you'll see, we already have the classes assigned to all the different areas, buttons, logos, etc. Uh, the containers are all pretty much set up in the kind of layout we want to use. And now it's time to start adding some fonts and, and experiment with uh, some visuals. Uh, to, do, to start things off, <clears throat> We want to make sure we have access to our style sheet file. Uh, in this particular example, uh, the style sheet is saved as a separate document. And when you're in split view and you look at your source code, you also have the option of quickly switching to see which styles are applied by clicking up here. And the source code view changes to display your style sheet file. It's a quick way of swapping back and forth. Uh, of course, you can always open your style sheet file like this and work with it directly in there. And then just swap between styles and layout. Um, whichever method works for you is fine. I find that I switch usually like this and everything works perfectly well. So, to start things off, we'll have to go to Google Web Fonts. And to do that, we'll open the browser window. The address is www.google.com slash fonts. And once you're there, you'll see a list of all the available fonts that Google has that you can use on your layout. <clears throat> you can sort by categories, uh, thickness, length, width, etc. But sometimes it's fun just to scroll through and see what you're looking for. Uh, additional filtering involves the type of context you want to use the font in. Um, paragraph fonts are obviously easier to read. Uh, here's an example of something you might want to avoid as this is extremely difficult to read on the screen whereas something like this is a lot easier on the eyes. Uh, if we filter by poster, we'll probably get a lot of headline fonts that are pretty good for uh, large titles, etc., but probably would not work well as body text. So to start things off, I'm going to choose something that's fairly obvious. Orbitron looks pretty good. Um, what we can do is basically look at some of the options here, quick use or pop out. If we look at quick use, it'll allow us to quickly manage um, everything we need to insert this onto our page. So step one is choose the styles you want. Now some fonts provide more than one style. You have the regular version here. We have a medium, bold, and ultra bold. Keep in mind that if you want to use all four of these and you turn on the checkbox to keep adding, you'll notice this little meter over here starts going up. The needle starts rising. Uh, these fonts are downloaded to the user's computer when they visit your web page. And the more fonts that you add or the more styles that you add, the heavier the download gets. So 
If you're not going to need the old ultra bold version, there's really no need to install it. And that way we usually keep the download a bit more realistic. Uh, normal and bold are usually pretty good choices, but depending on your lay layout and design, you may want to add more. Uh, second step, choose the character sets you want. In this case, there is only one character set, and it's Latin. Sometimes there are extended character sets for Cyrillic language or Greek or other uh, languages that require extended characters. And finally, the step three is the code to add this to your website. Now, normally, if it's just a one pager, you can grab this link over here and add it to your HTML page at the top in the head area. But if you're going to be using the font site-wide, um, you're better off assigning the import to the CSS file. That way all the pages that use that CSS file will also include the font. Now the reason why we're doing this is because we're telling the browser to download the font to the user's computer so that it displays on their screen properly. So we're going to use the at import command which is used for CSS and we're just going to grab this text over here just uh, copy this text and now we're going to return to Dreamweaver and in our styles.css or whichever CSS file you're using for your site we're going to add this into the top. So whether it's the first line or second line, it doesn't really matter, but it's better to add this right to the top so as soon as the page loads and the CSS loads, this is one of the first things that uh, get uh, processed. So we paste it in here, that's all you need to do for the CSS. Uh, the little asterisk up here says that the indicates that the styles.css file has not been saved. So you may want to start by saving this. There we go, that's saved. And now we actually want to use this on our page. So by default, switch back to our Google Fonts page. We want to integrate the fonts into our page, we have to use this CSS code. So we'll just copy this here. And all this does is it calls the actual font and assigns it to the uh, elements that you want to assign it to. Now, by default, if you create your body tag um, and assign the font in there, this, uh, it will assign this font as the default in your entire page. Remember, body is a, what the browser displays to the end user. Everything between those two tags is visible. So if we assign this to the entire body tag, we'll notice that um, it's assigned site-wide. Now, Dreamweaver won't actually display this font when you're in editing mode, but if you switch to live view, you'll notice that it assigns the font because it's actually processing the commands, and the font displays as ex expected uh, site-wide, like the entire page uses this font now as default, because none of these other elements have any specific fonts assigned to them. So it becomes the default font. I'll switch back to styles.css because, as I mentioned, this font is probably good for titles, not so good for reading body text. It's a little tricky on the eyes and uh, we want to just use it for things like titles or maybe buttons. So instead of assigning that to the body, I'm just going to cut this and assign it to headings. And to assign it to multiple headings at once, um, just assign the heading tag, so h1, 
H2, H3, H4, let's say. Um, and make sure that the syntax is entered properly. So by doing this, it saves me the trouble of having to create a new line for h1, h2, h3 using the comma allows me to assign this value to all of these heading uh, tags. Now if I refresh by clicking on live view again, we'll see that it's only assigned to anywhere that there's a heading applied. If we switch back to our source code, we can see that here in our code, our title is heading 1, and we've assigned that to the font. So we can assign it to anywhere by changing the format. So down here, we can go from heading 1 to heading 2. And if we go back to live view, we can see the results. Now for the body text itself, we'll go through the process again. We'll switch back to our Google fonts. We'll do a search for some better paragraph text, something that's a bit easier to read. These are not so great. And here's something that looks likes so we can use that. So again, the process continues, quick use. We make sure we choose the styles that are available and we go to our import tab. We grab this line. We turn to Dreamweaver. And again, at the top, either above or below the font that we previously imported, we'll add that line as well. Now, to add this site-wide, we'll copy. And again, as we did previously, we'll add this to the body tag because by default, this font makes a bit more sense to use. If we go back to Live View now, we'll see that the fonts are applied as we've specified. Now you can always override these attributes by selecting specific elements, for example, this button, and uh, assigning a different attribute to it. So <clears throat> if we go back to our source code, we can add in the nav button class a different font. So let's find um, nav button here in our styles list. And here we can change the property and we'll make it uh, font family. And we can just select from our regular list. Let's have some fun and make it Comic Sans because, hey, who doesn't love that font? And we can also change the size. So font size will make... Uh, Oops, maybe bigger. There we go. And if we switch to live view, there it is with all the different fonts visible. So, to sum up, um, we go to Google Fonts, we select the import command for the proper CSS entries. Uh, we assign body text to the font that we need, phase one. For titles, we can override the defaults by assigning h1 to h4 and assigning a new font to that. And those values can be overridden at any time by changing the class that is uh, assigned to any one of your text elements. If in the middle of the text, you feel that you want to override the font that's being used. One way to do that is by using the span tag. So if we go back to source code, 
and we see the font that we have, the text that we have selected, what you can do is add a span tag and assign a new class to it. And we'll name this uh, override text. And we'll refresh the styles sheet so that uh, override text is it available? Nope. So we'll click here to create a new class. This one is going to be called override text. Make sure that it's spelled exactly the same way as the class that you've assigned over here. Click OK. And now you can assign a different type of font family. We can use maybe Times New Roman and make that size 18. You can change other text attributes. So now, in your text, even though by default it's using uh, the Google font that we assigned, you can override those values using the span tag. If you want to repeat that at a, in a different place on your page, it's fairly easy now that you've set up a class. You can select your text. And down here in your properties um, area in Dreamweaver, that class will be available. So override text is available. You can click there and it assigns it automatically. So preparation is good and once you invest some time defining all your elements it becomes a lot more easy to manage this text. If uh, we want to change this at this point we can just go to class and we'll choose in this particular case, we'll go to Format to Heading 2, let's say. And if we go to Live View, we can see our changes as they would appear in the browser. This concludes the tutorial on importing web fonts. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully, you'll have some fun with your page.